Hey, it's the fish guy. Education is one of the keys to simplicity in aquarium ownership. So today we're here for another reviews and how to's simplifying aquarium ownership for you. Hey, this is Billy and today we're talking about dinoflagellates, how to identify them and how to get rid of them from your tank. So what dinoflagellates are is they're pretty much flagellated eukaryotes which is a scientific jargon for tiny specks of evil that you don't want in your tank. So the way you can identify them is they often cause like a, a brown on the sand or on the rocks and that can smother or be even toxic to your corals and your invertebrates in your tank like snails, urchins, uh, sand sifting sea stars, anything that eats uh, algae off of the, the rock and sand accumulates these dinoflagellates in them and they can be toxic to them. They're kind of hard to differentiate from diatoms or from hair algae or cyano. They look very similar but there are some telltale signs that are just slightly different than those and the treatment is definitely different. The way they differ a little bit is sometimes the brown will be there during the day and at night time the brown disappears. So if it was uh, diatoms or cyano or hair algae, that would stay at night and you'd be able to see it. Another way that you could see that it was uh, dinoflagellates is it looks kind of like hair algae. It's got long strands, but in those strands it has bubbles. And then another way that you could see is if you were losing those snails and urchins, uh, that's kind of a tip that you might be dealing with dinoflagellates instead of a hair algae. Another way to check to see if it's gonna be dinos is it'll often come back the day, the day after you've done some cleaning in the tank. So if you vacuum your sand and then the next day you've already got that brown covering it again, chances are it could be dinoflagellates. Since it's really difficult to tell whether it's dinos or diatom, cyano, the best way to, to check that is actually in a microscope. So if you take a small sample of it with uh, like a turkey baster or some way to, like a little deli cup or something, put a drop of that under a, under a microscope and you can actually see them squirming around uh, underneath the slide and that's kind of how you can identify that you're dealing with dinos instead of diatoms. So once you've identified that you have dinos in your tank, the best way to treat it is to do what's called a blackout period and we're also gonna couple that with a a competing bacteria to help eliminate it from the tank. For the blackout period, you want something like a, like a aquarium background or even uh, wrapping paper that will just black out the tank. You want to cover up all areas of it so there's no light getting into the tank. Uh, you'll also turn off your aquarium lights at the same time and this is going to go on for a three-day period. Uh, this way, because the the dinos can use a little bit of light to stay alive. We want to eliminate that to make sure that we really give them a one-two punch here and get them out of your tank. So you can use some wrapping paper, scissors, and tape. Really close up the tank good. You also want to make sure that you set up an aerator in the tank so that there's plenty of oxygen during the treatment because the Dr. Tim's refresh can actually decrease the amount of oxygen uh, during the treatment. So you want to make sure you set up these air stones so that they got plenty of oxygen. When you're treating for dinos too, it's a good, good idea to have some carbon running in the system. This will help take out any toxins that are in the water um, because those dinos can actually release their toxins into the water and that can be harmful for your fish, your corals, your inverts, and you don't want it in there. If you have an auto doser on the tank, you probably want to turn that off too because your corals are not going to be growing. They're not going to be consuming that uh, alkalinity or that calcium or anything that you might be dosing. During the treatment, it's probably going to be easiest if you put your UV and your skimmer onto a power strip um, because after you do a dose of the refresh or the waste away on, in here, you actually have to turn off your skimmer and UV for a couple hours to make sure that this bacteria has time to take hold in the tank. During the three-day blackout period, you'll still f feed your fish regularly uh, and you'll actually check in on the tank after doing a dose of refresh daily to see if there's any cloudiness that occurs. So once you add in a, the dose of refresh to the tank for the day, you'll turn your 
your UV and skimmer off for a few hours, and then during that time, you'll check your tank to make sure it didn't get cloudy. If the tank starts to get a little cloudy, a little hazy, um, almost like someone poured a little bit of milk in there, then you'll want to turn the UV and skimmer back on because uh, this will help make sure that it stays uh, nice and clean and that the bacteria aren't uh, populating the tank too quickly. So after three days of being in the dark, you're going to want to take off the wrapping paper or whatever you use to cover up the tank and then we start the waste away treatment, which is this right here. And you're going to do the same thing uh, on a daily basis for the next five days you're going to add in the, the waste away and then turn off your UV and skimmer for three hours afterwards. Same idea if you see any cloudiness. Uh, in the meanwhile, you want to turn that UV and skimmer back on. When doing the waste away treatment, you actually want to start off at about a quarter dose for your first treatment. And then the next day, as long as the tank didn't get cloudy, you'd go up to a half dose. And then the next day, if the tank still didn't get cloudy during that time, you'd go up to a full dose. And then for the remainder of the, the five days, you would just use a full dose to, to round out the treatment. Once the treatment is done, you'll obviously want to make sure that the tank doesn't have any dinos in it anymore. Um, you shouldn't have it pretty much anywhere. Uh, if there is any still left on the sand or on the rocks, it's a good idea to do a second treatment at that point. Really make sure that you get rid of it. Uh, also check on the health of your corals. Make sure that they're doing okay and that they'd be able to survive and still do well during that second treatment because the three-day period, the three -day period uh, of darkness is a little stressful on them, but most corals could take that kind of uh, that period of dark no problem. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that's, that's how you get rid of dinos. It's a little bit more of an intense uh, treatment than, say, getting rid of hair algae or diatoms or cyano, but it's definitely worth it. These guys can be really invasive in your tank and you want to get them out of there as soon as possible. Check out our YouTube channel at YouTube backslash fish guy TV. Give us a call at 877 fish talk or drop us a line at support at somethingfishyinc.com. We look forward to connecting with you.